so uh, good morning everyone or i must say good night it's 12:38 in the night or morning well leave it it's actually technically it's a uh, morning and uh, as it is uh, night all right so today we are going to talk about the international organizations i hope i'm uh, audible enough because i'm quite feeling sleepy and uh, still no uh, interviews are coming so uh, let's do this it won't take long so these are the international organizations i'm not going to teach them from this i have uh, made a pdf from my notes the united nations all the all right the first and foremost now uh, the un it what is it is it's an intergovernmental organization all right it promotes the international cooperation all right and it was replaced by it was it replaced league of nation all right uh, uh, it is a earlier version league of nations it uh, united nation replaced it and it uh, united nation was established in 24th of october 1945 that means after the second world war for i must say after few years of second world war now it has been written also after uh, world war second in order to prevent another such conflict all right now uh, the paris peace conference established the league of nation to remain harmony to maintain harmony between the countries i'm sorry i'm feeling a little low <laughs> i hope you you all can manage and this is all the price we have to pay right for our nation well the paris peace conference established the league of nation to maintain harmony between the countries all right the league lacked the representation for the colonial people all right league didn't have, the league of nation didn't uh, uh, it was lacking the representation of the colonial people then half of the world population it was the actually half of the world's population the colonial people and the significant participation uh, from several major powers including us ussr all right that is soviet union germany and japan it failed to act against the japanese invasion of manchuria in 1931 though uh, japan was part of league of nations still it uh, it failed japanese to uh, to the invasion of manchuria in 1931 and the second italo uh, italo european war in 1935 all right the japanese invasion of china in 1937 and germany expansions under adolf hitler that culminated in the second world war means the league Na- league of nation was completely uh, it was a waste it was no good it has failed to stop japanese and germans all right so uh, these are the major parts germany and japan were major you know major part of the league of nation and it has failed both of them so it was completely waste so uh, league of nation was replaced by united nation all right and uh, how the league of nation was uh, uh, established in by the paris peace conference all right and the united nation it was in the october 1945 all right to promote the international harmony on this is the this was the first page now we will see the united nations aims and objective uh, what is this to maintain peace and security in the world that is the first and foremost thing all right as it was created after the second world war that means it will be giving peace and security all right to promote peace and security then we work together to remove poverty now uh, the un is also uh, working together to remove the poverty diseases and illiteracy and encourage respect for each other's right of basic freedom all right then to develop friendly relation among the nations all right friends now uh, it uh, to be a center to help nations achieve these common goals all right 
Now these are the quite uh, quick facts. The UN was established in October 1945. What was the date? I think 24 or 27. Something like that was the date. Uh, it was 24th. Correct. It was 24th of uh, October in 1948. It was established. The headquarters is in New York. You have to remember. All right. The member states are 193. The official language are used as uh, Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. The United uh, and the day it was um, uh, established that is 24th October. It is UN Day. All right. Now six main bodies of the General Assembly: the United Nations Security Council. Now that means there are six main bodies. All right. First is the General Assembly. The United Nations Security Council, the Economic and Social uh, Council, the uh, Trusteeship Council, the International Court of Justice, and Secretariat. All right, these are the six main bodies. All right, I believe uh, in my eyes, how uh, little bit how I can rem uh, recall, the trusteeship was cancelled. So there are total five main bodies. Of UN, UN General Assembly, the United Nations Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, and the International Court of Justice and the Secretariat. All right, the Secretariat is different. The International Court of Justice is different. All right, then we have the Economic and Social Council, and we have the General Assembly and the Security Council. UN General. Uh, see, I told you I was remembering a little bit. Now, now see the Trustee Council suspended operation in 1994. All right, the Trusteeship Council was suspended in 1994 upon the independence of Palau, the last remaining UN trustee territory, and now it has the five principal organs. All right, so earlier it has uh, six main bodies, but in 1994, uh, after the independence of Palau, it was the last remaining UN trustee territory. When it got independent, then there were uh, basically five principal organs. All right. Now, uh, now we'll talk about the organs of UN. That is the five total uh, organs. Now, a uh, general assembly. The general assembly is the main uh, deliberative, deliberative assembly of UN nation. All right, composed of all UN members, states. The assembly meet in regular year sessions. All right, means regularly they meet, and uh, there is a president elected among the member states. All right, and the first session. Uh, Convented on the 10th January 1946. That is after one year, or I would say after in 24th October it was established. So uh, October, November, December, January. After three months, after three months of its establishment, the first session of General Assembly took place, and it was in the Westminster in London. All right, Westminster is a place in London and it uh, included the representative of 51 nations. All right. The 51 nations uh, uh, took part in that uh, first conference, it, which which happened on the 10th January 1946. And uh, it happened uh, to be in the Westminster in London. All right. And uh, the president is uh, elected or nominated by all the member state. All right. And the uh, Meeting is done regularly and per annum basis, that is yearly. I hope it is understandable. Now, uh, we will talk about the Security Council. Okay, UN Security Council. The UN Security Council is in charge of maintaining peace and secu uh, security among the nations. All right, friends. Now, so, uh, while other organs of United Nations can only make recommendation to the member's government, uh, recommendation to the member governments. The Security Council has the power to make binding decision that member government has to agree to carry out under the uh, term of Charter Article 25. All right, means whatever the uh, last resolution has been passed in the UN Security Council, each and every member of the UN has to uh, has to agree on it. All right, they have to agree on it, and it is uh, given by the uh, the Charter of article 25 all right the decision of the council are known to be in security council resolutions all right friends whatever the council is making decision 
now uh, these uh, uh, decisions are known as un security council resolution and the security council held its first first session in 17 january 1946 that means the when the uh, when the first uh, un uh, uh, general assembly happened that is in 10th uh, january 1946 at that time itself that is after uh, after a week that is in 17 january 1946 the un security council meeting first meeting was done and the security council is compo- composed of 15 members permanent and non permanent all right now in 15 members uh, <coughs> there are five permanent members and 10 non permanent members now we have to look on the uh, permanent members there are five major permanent members that is china france russia united kingdom and us so how to remember it first remember us and uk these two th- these two countries will always be there okay the united kingdom the you know the british empire and the united nations united states of america the major power then uh, nobody can challenge russia as well russia is also a very dominating country and there in russia uh, in asia another dominating country is the china all right which is uh, very popular and uh, it is uh, uh, also uh, making cheap products and later on uh, in europe we have the united kingdom as, as well as the france okay that means in the american continent we have just usa uh, two from the european continent and two from the asian continent all right the european ones are the Fra- Fra- the france and the uk american is the usa and in asia we have china and russia all right now the veto power now what is the veto power the un nation security council power of veto refers to the veto power wielded solely by the five five permanent members of the us security council all right enable them to prevent the adoption of any substantive resolution means if they, they are making any substantive resolution and uh, uh, it it uh, the veto power can help in preventing any substantive resolution all right as well as decide which issue falls under substantive priority all right the veto is exercised when any permanent member the so called p5 that is permanent five members cast a negative vote on the substantive draft resolution means any draft resolution which has come in the united nations security council then any of the five countries one of the five countries if it uh, uh, says no uh, to sanction that uh, uh, draft uh, that uh, act is is means as the veto power and uh, no other country uh, means that resolution won't be passed that is the veto power All right, a negative vote for substantial transformation. All right, the absentees or the absence from the vote for permanent member does not prevent a draft resolution from being adopted. If any of the member is absent in the draft, uh, that means it it won't get affected. All right, the Article Twenty Seven of the UN Charter State: Each member of uh, Security Council shall have one vote. All right, decision of the Security Council on procedural matter. shall be made by an affirmative vote of nine members means the decision of the security council on procedural matters shall be made by the affirmative vote of nine members the decision of the security council on the other matter shall be uh, made conferred with the vote of nine members including the concurrent members of the permanent members provided that in decision of chapter 6 and under paragraph 3 of article 52 of party of the state shall be taken vote vote now let's leave it we i hope uh, it is quite understandable we have to uh, know about the five uh, governing bodies all right general assembly the united nations uh, united nations security council thereafter we have the secretariat and then uh, we have the uh, economic and uh, social council and we have the international court of justice all right now we have also talked about the un general uh, assembly council Uh, the, sorry general assembly uh, it takes part yearly all right first was in the 10th january 
and the president is elected by all the members and first uh, first meeting was done in Westminster in London all right the security council consists uh, the security council uh, uh, was uh, in the first was the first established on the 7th uh, uh, January 1946 all right it took security council of 15 members that is five permanent and 10 non permanent members all right now uh, we haven't talked about the non permanent ones right now the 10 non permanent members are elected for two years terms by the general assembly all right well you know, we have talked about the general assembly now these the, the general assembly uh, it elects the 10 non permanent members on the uh, basis for two years all right thank god we have talked about it and five members we have already talked two from the asia two from the europe and one from the america itself american continent first the usa uk france russia and china all right and they have given uh, power to uh, all uh, to give uh, to stop or to identify any substantive title all right any substantive resolution and if any person cast a negative vote that means it is not passed the resolution has not been passed each member is having one vote and uh, all right these all the things are there now the secretariat the un secretary is held by the secretary general or assisted by the staff of international civil servant worldwide all right that means these secretariat the name as well sell the uh, it is a kind of bureaucrats uh, the UN Secretariat is held by the Secretary General. All right, Secretary General, and it is assigned by a staff of international civil servants worldwide. It provides studies, information, and facilitate needed by the UN uh, United Nations body for their meetings. It also carries out tasks as directed by the United Security Council. All right, whatever the uh, important uh, objectives have been given by the UN Security Council. They will do it and it is headed by the security general who has been assisted by the international civil servants. All right. Now, International Court of Justice, uh, it is located in Hagu, Netherlands. Remember the point. It is located in Hagu, Netherlands. And the Netherlands, you can say Hagu, the Hagu, Netherlands or the, even the uh, Netherlands. And it is the primary judicial organ of the United Nations. It was established in 1945 in the United Nations Charter and the court began work in 1946 as a successor to the Permanent Court of International Justice. Alright, that means uh, when the UN was formed, at that time itself, uh, uh, the International Court of Justice was established in 1945 itself. and But it began working in 1946 when it replaces its Permanent Court of International Justice. Alright. And it has been uh, uh, situated or located in the Hague, Netherlands, or you can say the Netherlands. All right, friends. Now ICJ is composed of fifteen judges. All right. Now, uh, now economic and social council. Uh, it its work is to assist the uh, General Assembly in promoting international economic and social cooperation of the development and development. All right. Now, the, we know the trustee council was cancelled, so there is no point of uh, reading it. All right. Now, the World Bank. Now, World Bank was established in 1944. That means a one year prior to the establishment of UN. All right. And it is headquarter is in Washington, D.C., USA. World Bank. All right. What is the function of World Bank? The World Bank is an international financial institution that provides loan to countries. All right, it provides loan to countries of world for capital projects. If somebody has uh, big projects, the World Bank will provide the loan to the countries. It comprises of two institutions: the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development. All right, the first is the for the reconstruction development and the International Development Development Association. Means uh, you are reconstruction and developing. All right, or either you can developing association in these two forms they provide the loans and the world bank is a, is a component uh, of the world bank group all right world bank provides technical service to the member countries now uh, a bank can grant loan to members up to 20 percent of its share 
in the paid up capital all right whatever share it is having it can give only 20 percent of the share all right in the paid up capital all right the qualities of loan interest rate and terms and condition are determined by the bank itself all right the qualities of loan the interest rate and the term condition derived by the bank itself now bank uh, grant loan a particular project duly submitted members all right so we have understood well uh, what we will learn that it was established a uh, year prior to the un's uh, establishment that is in 1944 all right headquarters is in washington dc it is a financial institute which provides loans to the countries it has one around uh, 190 members all right uh, it is comprises of uh, two institutions. One is the Reconstruction and Development, and the other one is the Development Association. All right. And then uh, uh, it is part of World Bank Group, and it can grant loan up to 20% of its share, and in the paid up capital. All right. And the loans, interest rate, terms and condition are determined by the bank itself. All right. Now the International Monetary Fund (IMF). The International Monetary Fund (IMF). All right. Now this is established on the 1944 itself. All right, that means near to the World Bank. But the World Bank was first established in July 1944, and uh, the International Monetary Fund (IMF) was established on the 27th of December 1944, and it's also headquarters is in Washington D.C. Uh, in the uh, USA. All right, and it also has the 190 countries but it had 189 so on an average 190 countries it both had what is the function function is surveillance over the members economic policy so they uh, international monetary fund it does the surveillance over the members of uh, the members economic uh, what are the what is the economic policies of the uh, countries all right the financing temporary balance of payment needs means they they do the financing and the, uh, the temporary balance of payment needs so if, if somebody needs some payment needs so they can temporarily provide the financial balance all right and combating poverty in low income countries so if the countries are there like uh, you know uh, in uh, like african countries uh, namibia and uh, ghana these are if the, these countries are having some somalia if these countries are having you know uh, they are dealing with poverty they help imf help in dealing with them then mobilizing external financing all right mobilizing external financing means if uh, they also mobilize the external financing so these you have to understand you can understand that imf imf it was established in 27th uh, december 1914 uh, 1944 and its headquarters is in washington dc as well uh, the members there are 190 countries uh, part of it and its function is to provide the surveillance it function it functions as a surveillance group over the members economic policies they also help in uh, providing uh, financial assistance uh, in the uh, payment need which is temporary in nature they also combat the poverty in uh, low income countries and it helps in mobilizing the external financing now we have the uh, world health organization who it was made in uh, 1948 and its headquarter is in geneva uh, Switzerland, all right, and total 192 states are there. Yeah. 192 member states are there, all right. Now, uh, WHO, which was formed in 7th April 1948, and its headquarters is very important Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva is in Switzerland. Now, we have talked about a uh, major part. Now, World Bank was in Washington, DC, International Monetary Fund is in Washington, DC, and WHO is in Geneva, all right. UN, UN is in Washington, DC is, as well. All right, see New York, not Washington DC. UN, the United Nations organization's headquarters is in New York. All right, friend, and rest all is in uh, Washington DC, as well as uh, there is also a World Health Organization which is in Geneva, Switzerland. Now, friends, now we will talk about the economic organizations. In international organization, there are certain type of uh, international organizations which have the tied up of uh, economic organization all right they have work of economics they deal with economics now this g20 or the group of 20 it was established in 1999 all right and the headquarter there is no headquarter of g20 nations all right and the head tt 
uh, it is rotational basis means every country usually gets the uh, the the uh, you know uh, which organization which uh, pre presides the this organization so it is uh, it has doesn't have any headquarter but you can see that which country recently is having uh, g20 nations i believe it is india or it and the members members are 19 countries plus the european union 19 countries plus the european union all right we will talk about the european union later on and the group of twenty countries related forum of the world major economies all right it is very uh, a good organization which provide the information as well as the uh, it deals with major economic problems and they seek to develop uh, global policies to address today's most uh, pressing challenges means whatever the nations the g20 nations are having problems all right and these problems are uh, which are very pressing in challenges which countries are facing so these challenges have been uh, monitored as well as dealt with g20 countries now uh, the g20 is made up of 19 countries and the european union all right we have the 19 countries as well as the european union now what are the countries of uh, are there now the 19 countries are argentina australia brazil canada china germany france india indonesia italy japan mexico russia saudi arabia south africa south korea turkey and the united kingdom as well as the united states all right so uh, which can be seen that pakistan is not part of uh, this uh, g20 summit all right so again what are the 19 countries so what countries we remember we country we remember that uh, india is part of it all right g20 india is part of it china is part of it thereafter usa is part of it then uk is part of it all right so these four major countries are part of it all right then russia is part of it it's another major country all right now look after near nearby your countries now indonesia is part of it japan is part of it is there any other country which are uh, which is uh, close to us and there is south korea south korea is again part of it uh, nation all right these are the nations which are part of it in nearby nearby uh, countries all right australia is part of it again nine countries are from uh, nearby location itself that is in the australia which is a continent then in near uh, nearby in asia itself uh, around the india itself nine countries are there which is part of it so first uh, first learn uh, the major points on nine countries which are part of it as well as the country which are well known all right so first of all we know that india is there and if india is there then china then japan all right and then uh, the uk usa uh, russia all right then there is indonesia south korea and the uh, australia yeah how could you forget the australia all right these are the countries which are now after the nine countries there are rest 10 countries itself more now what countries are there outside now if russia is there then germany will be there and if germany is there then france then france will be there all right so germany and france is another countries now uh, if usa is there then canada is also there all right these are the neighboring nations so canada is also there all right so what do we got we got the uh, and if we are uh, in, in nearby america itself we can see canada is there all right then brazil is there all right then argentina is there argentina brazil canada and then we also had germany okay and france Germany and France are together, which is closer to UK itself. All right. And then we have Italy. Uh, Italy is again closer to Germany. Uh, uh, okay. Then Mexico. Mexico is closer to America. All right. Now in uh, Middle East, we have the South Arabia. All right. And South Africa. South Africa is another continent. Uh, sorry, Africa is another continent in which South Africa is part of it. Then if South Africa, then South Arabia is there, then Turkey is also there. All right. 
so uh, these are the countries which you have to understand all right uh, means uh, nearby in europe we have argentina brazil or brazil is south uh, american country then uh, germany is there france is there argentina germany france all right italy Max, uh, mexico is south american and uh, uh, turkey is again european country and uh, yeah these are, are the middle eastern european countries all right so there we have we have included all right we can always include south uh, arabia closer to india all right 10 countries south arabia is there then turkey is there all right 11 countries south arabia turkey is there thereafter is there any other country which is closer to india uh, these are the countries which are closer to india and rest are the argentina uh, these countries you have to understand remember argentina brazil all right now if we talk uh, from the initially uh, all the 19 countries which are part of g20 nations uh, we have the argentina all right australia brazil china all right china is there canada is there and uh, germany france india indonesia all right italy then japan mexico russia all right saudi arabia and south africa south korea then we have turkey we have united kingdom and the united states of america all right these are the countries which are part of g20 and another uh, 19 countries plus Europe, European Union. We will talk European Union later, later on. And the G20 was born on the meeting of G7 financial minister and central governor of 1990 who have saw the need of more inclusive body to broaden the respect to the strong impact of addressing nation. Collectively, G20, uh, G20 members represent all inhabitant countries, 85% of global economic outpost and two third of world population, 75% of international trade. That means the G20 members represent all all inhabitant continents. All right, they're covering all continents. We have the American, all right, the Asian, European, Australian, uh, Middle Eastern, whatever the continents or the places are there. So people are representing from every different part of the country, and it is uh, assembling around 85 percent of the global uh, economic output. All right. And two third of world population has been dependent on this G20 nation, and seventy percent of the international trade is happening in the G20 nations. All right. Now the G20 policy has been enriched by the participation of key international organizations, regularly inviting them in G20 meetings. Guest countries invite all the president delegations and and uh, engagement uh, groups. All right, engagement groups uh, and uh, compo composed of different sector civil society all right again uh, if you want to revise then uh, it was made in 1999 it doesn't had any headquarter but uh, the, head the presidency is decided on the rotational basis and consists of 19 countries plus the european union what are the countries 19 countries let's uh, just think on the indian first we have india china all right india china indonesia and uh, we have uh, Russia, UK, uh, USA, okay? And uh, then we have uh, uh, Canada, South Korea, South Africa, all right? And uh, South Arabia, all right? Turkey is there. Uh, thereafter, uh, uh, Italy, Japan. Mexico is there, all right. Germany, France is there, Brazil is there, Australia is there, and Argentina is there. See, plus the European Union. Now G8. G8 doesn't all uh, doesn't have the headquarters, all right. It is again uh, the rotational basis. The president is decided, but it was established in 1975. It consists of eight countries, but we should know that the G8 reformed as G7. From 2014, due to suspension of Russia participation. No, uh, Russia tried to invasion. Uh, it had uh, invasion in the Ukraine, and uh, after that act, uh, the uh, G8 nation became the G7 nation. All right, the group of eight is formed created by the 
फ्रांस इन 1975 ऑल इट वाज क्रिएटेड बाय फ्रांस फॉर द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ सिक्स कंट्रीज इन द वर्ल्ड द द फ्रांस जर्मनी इटली सो इट इज बेसिकली टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर दिस रोटेटिंग दिस फ्रांस इज डूइंग इट तो फ्रांस जर्मनी इटली जापान एंड द यूनाइटेड किंगडम एज वेल एज द यूएस सो यूएस एंड यूनाइटेड किंगडम विल ऑलवेज बी देयर plus japan is also super power so japan will be there but if uh, something french has done then france will always include germany and italy with it because these are the neighboring nations france germany italy all right so the, these are the neighboring nations as well as these are the super power nations but in 1976 canada joined the group thus created g7 all right now if you us joined then its neighbor canada has also joined the nation which has made it g7 now russia was part of it but in 220 2014 russia was uh, removed in 1997 the group added russia thus becoming the g8 nation in addition the european union is represented within the g8 but cannot host or chair all right you, you, uh, eu is also part of it but they cannot host a chair the g8 are referred to the member state or the annual summit meeting of g8 at nation all right now we have the g7 nations all right what are g7 nations the group of seven uh, informal block of industrialized democracies what are the uh, what are these countries the united states the canada all right the french germany and italy again the neighbors 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 there neighbors there then superpowers japan and uk usa all right so th- these are very familiarized groups you know uh the same countries that is g7 is something without the russia all right they meet annually discuss the global form governance and it started at the rambert in 1975 the initiative of french president whatever the name is and german chancellor has schmider the french west germany italy japan and at kingdom as well as the united states formed the group of seven nations and later on uh advance world's more advanced canada was also included in and 2027 holds a dialogue with the major economic policies uh major economic policy of brazil china india mexico and south africa all right the g7 deals with such issues like global economic outlooks and macroeconomic management international trade uh, energy climate and relation with the development russia belong to forum of indian trade the united the suspension the same thing all right now what they have talk about g8 the same thing is a g7 that means g7 is something which was g8 but without uh, russia all right now we have the opec that is organization of petroleum exporting countries the organization of petroleum exporting countries the countries which exports the petrol it is organization of those countries all right now it was established in 1960s and headquarters is in austria Vienna Austria all right and uh, uh, the member are 18 countries so it must be gulf countries as per my understanding because gulf gulf countries only provide the petrol and only these organization can make the those countries all right the uh, organization of uh, petroleum exporting countries opec was uh, founded in baghdad all right founded in baghdad iraq all right with a a uh, signing of agree- agreement in 1960 by the five countries namely islamic republic of iran that is iran was there iraq was there see uh, th- these two enemy countries were there together iraq iran kuwait saudi arabia and venezuela all right these were the uh, pr- primary uh, five members and they became the founding members of the organiz- uh, founding members of the organization that is the five countries iran iraq kuwait uh, saudi arabia and venezuela all right and it has the headquarter in the uh, uh, austria where is austria austria is closer to the uh, germany all right austria is closer to germany now australia and austria there is a difference all right austria hungary these are the vienna is the headquarter it consists of 13 countries and these countries were later joined by the qatar in 1961 indonesia libya the united arab emirates algeria nigeria yurokoda gabon angora 
and Guinea, uh, Guinea, Guinea, and Congo. All right. Now, now uh, in Middle Eastern plus the the African countries mainly join. All right. So five, the five founding members we have the Iraq, Iran. All right. Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, and uh, the Saudi Arabia, and we had the Venezuela. After that. Qatar joined, Indonesia, and uh, Libya, the United Arab Emirates, Algeria, Nigeria, Yokoda, Gabon, Angola, Guinea, and Congo. All right. Now the UQRA suspended in the member in December 1992, but rejoined OPEC in October 2007. The Indonesia suspended membership in 2009 and reactivated again in 2019. But decided to spend its membership one more at the 17th meeting of OPEC conference in the Gabon. Terminated its membership in January. However, it rejoined the organization. Currently, organization to 15 member countries. All right. Mean currently, it has 15 member countries. All right. Whatever they do, they leave the OPEC and then they rejoin. That is organization of petroleum exporting countries. OPEC. All right. The secretary was originally established in 1997 in Gen- uh, Guinea, Geneva, or at Switzerland, and uh, uh, the eight actually OPEC conference host. Oh, whatsoever. Uh, oh God, time is the time is no more, bro. 1:19 a.m. So, uh, whatsoever, we have to do it. Oh. Oof. uh okay uh so we know the countries all right all the five countries which are part of it iraq iran kuwait all right and uh, saudi arabia and venezuela thereafter uh congo is there all right namibia is there no 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 not namibia nigeria and guinea is there gabon is there angola is there algeria is there united arab emirates is there All right, then Libya is there, Indonesia is there, Qatar. <gasps> All right. So the later part of countries which join are the Qatar. Uh, in the Middle East itself, if you remember, Qatar is there, and United Emirates, uh, United Arab Emirates is there. All right. These two countries are the. These are these two countries are are part of the Middle East itself. So Qatar and United Arab Emirates, and then uh, uh, Indonesia is Asian country. All right, South. Uh, Which is a neighbor to India, Indonesia. Now uh, these countries, the different countries, these are from the uh, South African countries. Like Li- Libya is there, all right. Guinea is there, Congo is there, Gabon is there, Angola is there, Nigeria is there, all right. Now the APEC. We have done OPEC, Organization of Petrol Exporting Countries. Now we have the APEC. Now what is APEC? Is the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. That means Asia Pacific means the uh, the Asian countries which are uh, part of the uh, which are also part of the Pacific Ocean. It can be like that. All right, Asia Pacific, APEC, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation. All right, it was established in eighteen eighty nine. Headquarters in Singapore. That is China. All right, and. Uh, uh, 21 members are there now the idea of apac was first uh, publicly broading former prime minister of australia bob hole hawk during a speech in seoul korea on 3489 10 months later 12th asia pacific economic met in canberra australia to establish apac and the founding members are the australia so uh, asia plus pacific australia is there all right And Bruni Darasula is there. Canada is there. Indonesia is there. Canada, why? Because Canada shares with the Pacific Ocean. All right, United Nation is there. So Canada, United Nation is there. Then we have the Philippines is there. All right, Philippines is there. Uh, Indonesia is there. New Zealand is there. Malaysia is there. Thailand is there. Singapore is there. All right, Korea is there. Japan is there. And Australia is there. And Bruni. Daru Salam is there. All right. So again, if we talk about the countries of the uh, you know uh, USA type, Canada is there, USA is there. All right. 
Canada, USA is there. All right. Then uh, New Zealand's New Zealand type of uh, part of countries, you know, on the right hand part. Then uh, what are else countries uh, we have? So these are the countries from the right hand side. Uh, from the left hand side, we have Australia. Okay. And Jerusalem is also part of right, no? Brunei, that Jerusalem is part of right. Then we have Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, New Zealand, Philippines, and China, Hong Kong, China, and Chinese Tepes, Tepe joined in 1981, Mexico and Papua, New Guinea followed in 1982, Chile was asked, then Peru, Russia, Vietnam, and uh, no, these are the countries who got Russia was also part of it. Uh, APAC, Asia, Pacific Economic Cooperation. So that means major superpowers already joined the Pacific countries. Uh, Russia is there. All right. From, from the left hand side, who are there? Russia is there. China is there. Hong Kong is there. All right. Russia, China, Hong Kong, uh, Singapore is there. All right. Then uh, South Korea, Japan is there. South Korea, Japan, Indonesia, Philippines is there. And then uh, uh, Vietnam is there. All right. Thereafter, on the right hand side, we have uh, uh, the Jerusalem is there. Jerusalem is there. Canada is there. New Zealand is there. Uh, United States is there. All right. Mexico is there. Peru is there. All right. Now, APAC ensured that the good services, investment, and people moved earlier across the border. All right. That means goods, services, investments, and the people move easily across the borders. Member facilitate this trade through faster custom procedures at borders, more favorable business climates behind the border, and alignment regulation and standard across the region. For example, APAC initiatives to synchronize regulatory uh, uh, systems are a key step to integration the asia pacific economy all right a product can be uh, more easily exported with just one set of common standards across all economies all right so they they're actually working for the economy so easily all the products can be exported with common standards all right and uh, their primary goal is to uh, ensure the good services investments and the people to come across the border all right the trades become faster and in the border and, more, uh, and uh, whatever the climate is there a good climate is already made in and they are standard across the region all right these are the things which they have made now BRICS. now BRICS was established something on the 2029 the headquarters are rotational basis and the head is also rotation basis the members are five uh, south africa joined in 2010 all right the members are five south africa joined in 10 now there is also a break exit also when the britain uh, you know got removed from the uh, they it, it's voluntary removed itself from the BRICS. now BRICS is something china brazil russia india and africa all right b for brazil R is for Russia, I is for uh, India, C is for China, and S for South Africa. All right, BRICS countries are there. That is five countries. The name itself, B R I C S. All right, BRICS. So BRICS consists of uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And the first uh, BRIC for foreign minister meeting was whatsoever it doesn't have to do uh, well and good no this is uh, bullshit uh, you have you don't have to study all these things uh, all right uh, yeah uh, it was established during the six break summit in Fontana Brazil all right breaks countries comes from Asia Africa and Europe and America all right, the BRICS countries come from Asia, Africa, Europe, and America, and are all members of G20. So the, those countries which are part of G20, that is G19 plus European Union, 
these are the also part of BRICS nation. Together, they uh, account for 26.46% of world land area, 42.58% of world population, 13.24% of World Bank voting power, 14.91% of IMF qu quota share. All right. Now the European. Uh, now I believe this is this will be the part one of the video, and I will be also adding a few you know, uh, break exit and uh, other whatsoever is left. I will make another video, but first we will continue this video. But it's going to be a little late. 1:28 a.m. It's already been. So European Fre uh, Free Trade Association (EFTA) made in 1960. headquarters in geneva geneva is in switzerland and uh, it is part of four countries all right now we have the bimstrek bimstrek is headquartered at dhaka all right and uh, member of seven countries made in 1997 now what is bimstrek the bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technical and economical cooperation Bimstrek means it's a Bay of Bengal. The Bay of Bengal is a what? It is a Bay of Bengal is a water body. Uh, the Bay of Bengal initiative for multi multi sectoral technical and economical cooperation means they are working together in multi sectoral form. All right for the technical and economic cooperation. So they want some technical as well as the economic cooperation means development development in science and technology. and development in economics as well all right but initiative is from the bay of bengal bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral multi sectoral technical and economical cooperation all right and uh, seven countries are part of it <sighs> now a regional organization comprised of seven countries lying in the littoral adjacent area bay of bengal all right it constitutes seven member state and five derived uh, derived from south asia including bangladesh bhutan india nepal sri lanka and two from southeast asia that is myanmar and thailand all right the south asian countries and southeast asian countries it is different south asian it includes our countries like india and other you know neighbors and southeast asian countries are somewhat indonesia or right, in myanmar thailand these are the countries are southeast asian countries now uh, what uh, uh, it is deprived of how many countries total seven members are there the two are from southeast asia countries and uh, rest five are from south uh, south asian countries now what are the south asian countries it has the india again if india is there then uh, nepal will be there sri lanka will be there all right uh, along with that bangladesh of course it will be there it is in the bay of bengal and bhutan will be there all right the countries which are near to bay of bengal that is bangladesh is there india is there bhutan is there nepal is there sri lanka is there all right and then in southeast asia country we have the myanmar and the thailand so seven had been made all right and uh, uh, the bog was formed with four members state with the best bestec bangladesh india sri lanka thailand all right that is bangladesh india sri lanka and thailand initially these these were the nation but later on nepal added myanmar was added all right bhutan added so uh, and these these are the countries added which made it to the uh, total seven nations all right so uh, this is how that is uh, how it got better now the indian ocean rim association iora it is very important for the india india perspective all right indian ocean rim or association 1987 it was made headquarters is in uh, ebne cyber city mauritius all right mauritius is the uh, headquarter all right 23 nations are part of it uh, what does it does to promote the sustainable growth and balance development of the region and the member states of the indian ocean region all right Uh, Indian Ocean Rim Association, all right. Indian Ocean Rim, Ora, Iora, Iora, 
Ayura Indian Ocean uh, Rim Association. Uh, it is consisting of 23 nations. Headquarters is at Mauritius. It was made in 1997. All right. It promotes the sustainable growth and balance developed in the regional and member states of the Indian Ocean. And it focuses on the area of economic cooperation, which provides maximum opportunity for the development, shared interest, as well as the mutual benefits. And it promotes the liberalization, removal of impediment, and low barrier towards the free and enhanced flow of good services, investment, and technology within the Indian Ocean Rim. All right. Now, uh, please ignore uh, these uh, these things, but you can look into the WTO, the World Trade Organization, which is again in Geneva, Switzerland. All right. World Bank uh, was not in Geneva. All right. It was in Washington, D.C. And uh, the World Health Organization is in Geneva, I believe. All right. Now, uh, the WTO, the World Trade Organization, it is part of uh, 164 countries. And World Trade Organization is the international organization probably focused to open trade for the benefit for all. All right. It is the uh, helping countries to pro promote world trade all over the all over the world and uh, the function ensured the smooth uh, smooth of trade all right and then uh, it is the uh, settling dis disputes it also helps in uh, settling disputes all right and uh, uh, basically promoting the uh, the it, all it's care about the promoting uh, trade all over the world without any hindrance and if there is any dispute arises it uh, takes care of that now we will talk about the european union you know 19 plus the european union and g20 and which is g20 doesn't have a headquarter it has a rotational basis uh, presidencies now the european union was uh, established in 1993 all right headquarter is in brussels belgium all right belgium is the headquarter and 27 countries are part of it all right and the uh, it is a unique economical as well as the political union. All right, means political union as well as the economical union between the 27 European countries. All 27 European countries, which are European countries, are very smaller in nature. So they have the uh, 27 European countries, and uh, that together covers much of the continent. The predecessor of the EU was created aftermath of Second World War. And the first step was for economic cooperation. The idea being that the countries that trade with one another become economically inter interdependent and so more likely to avoid conflict. All right. So after the Second World War, uh, they made an idea for the economic cooperation for the better development of each other. And they wanted to be interdependent so that there would be no chances of war. All right. And the result was the European uh, Economic Community, EEC, was created. And uh, cooperation between six countries. What are the countries? Belgium, would, uh, which has the uh, headquarter. Germany, France, Italy, Luxembourg, and Netherlands. All right. Netherlands. Security Council is in Netherlands, no? Yeah, United you know, States Security Council is in Netherlands. No. I believe, yes. Or the Secretariat. Something is there. Netherlands is there. So Belgium, Germany, if Germany is there, my friend, Belgium is there, okay. Then Germany is there and definitely Italy and France will be there. Then Luxembourg and Netherlands. Now, all right. And uh, the EU main economic engine is the single market. They have one single market and it enables most goods and services, money and people to move freely. And the EU aims to develop the huge resources to other areas like energy knowledge capital market it, to ensure that european uh, europeans can draw maximum benefit from it all right so they, they are only dependent on the european nations they're interdependent and they all all they care about is development science all right knowledge capital market it, of the european na nations as well now we have the asian countries all right association of southeast asian countries now, India is not part of it. All right. All right. Southeast Asian countries. And uh, means uh, India comes under the South Asian countries. All right. We will see SARC, South Asian Association of Region Cooperation. All right. These are the uh, uh, Asian, ASEAN or Asian countries. 
the uh, association of southeast asian countries it is in jakarta headquarters is in jakarta indonesia all right it was formed in 1967 and it is uh, you know member of 10 countries now the association of southeast asian countries or the asean was established in 8 august 1967 in bangkok all right thailand with singing of asean declaration bangkok declaration and founding father of asean namely as indonesia uh, malaysia philippines singapore and thailand all right indonesia malaysia philippines singapore and thailand and bruni darussalam now bruni darussalam is in the is uh, south east asian country only okay and then joined <coughs> vietnam is also part of it laos is also part of it and uh, uh, myanmar is also part of it uh, cambodia is also part of it making it up to 10 member state of asean there are total 10 members all right the association of southeast asian nation is the regional intergovernmental organization it is means uh, it is more like a you know uh, uh, another european union type of uh, country all right intergovernmental organization comprising of 10 southeast asian countries that promote intergovernmental cooperation and facilities economic political security military education and social economic in- in- integration among its members and its asian states all right it promotes the intergovernmental cooperation facilitates the economic and the political security military education and socio culture all right politics security economy means they have completely overtook it means they are uh, also dealing with economics they are also dealing with the, the politics means everything they are including the uh, you know european union type of thing and the united nation or type of thing means economics politics security military education then socio cultural integration amongst the its members and it also uh, uh, regulates engage other states like uh, asia pacific region all right asia pacific means uh, apac you know asia pacific of economic cooperation the countries li- uh, the pacific oriented countries that is uh, the part of uh, asia as well as part of uh, americans also right canada will be there mexico brazil i don't know uh, sorry uh, canada will be there usa will be there all right then mexico will be there i'm not sure mexico is part of apec we have studied but i am not able to recall it currently uh, but leave it uh, all right region and beyond being global powerhouse the central platform for cooperation is asia pacific all right and one of the world's most prominent and influential organization asean maintain a global network of alliance and is involved in numerous international efforts All right, Asia is very popular. It is very influential. It is very prominent organization. All right. So, what are the countries of Asia? Let's uh, uh, let's understand. So, uh, f- Asian countries are uh, consisting of uh, see whatever Southeast Asian country you can find. Indonesia, Indonesia will be there. Myanmar, Myanmar could be there. All right, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines can be there. Singapore can be there. Four countries are there: Indonesia, Myanmar, uh, Philippines. All right. Thailand will be there, Singapore will be there, all right. Then uh, Darussalam will be there. Then Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, and uh, Myanmar. Myanmar, we have already talked about it. All right, Laos can be there. All right. Now we will talk about something important: Shanghai Cooperation Organization. and recently there was some news also about uh, uh, you know uh, pakistan is part of shanghai cooperation group but uh, when they are coming to india for some meeting and uh, no chinese uh, uh, defense minister will be there for, and uh, indian defense minister will be there but uh, pakistan is not sending its uh, defense minister in india all right now shanghai cooperation group established in 2001 headquarters is in beijing china beijing in china and uh, uh, total members are eight countries all right the shanghai cooperation group is a permanent intergovernmental international organization or right, it is a, an inter, intergovernmental international organization that cre- the creation the creation of which was announced in the shanghai that is in china uh, <coughs> by the kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan 
कजाकिस्तान किर्गिस्तान देन तजिकिस्तान इज ऑल्सो देयर नो ऑल टाइप ऑफ स्थान कजाकिस्तान किर्गिस्तान तजिकिस्तान उजबेकिस्तान ऑल राइट एंड चाइना इज देयर एंड देन रशिया इज देयर all right now uh, we have understood that all right by uh, kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan russia tajikistan uzbekistan all right all type of sun that doesn't have turkmenistan all right turkmenistan turkmenistan <coughs> kazakhstan kyrgyzstan uh, kazakhstan kyrgyzstan tajikistan uzbekistan all four stans are there kazakhstan kyrgyzstan tajikistan uzbekistan is there then china and russia all right so six we have then the total eight members are there no then india and pakistan together they are added understandable all right and now uh, the currently the iso comprises of eight members state namely the india kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan pakistan Russia, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. I believe if uh, India also had that Hindustan, it would be better, you know, to remember that uh, China and Russia uh, are some two different countries. Rest all are Stan only. And the SCO count for four observer states, namely the Islamic Republic, Af- Af- the Afghanistan, the Belarus, Iran, and Mongolia. All right, these are the four uh, observing state members. That is Afghanistan. I th- I believe Afghanistan got its uh, you know, uh, it is now part of uh, SCO in my eyes. How much I could re- remember, I might be wrong, but I believe Afghanistan is now part of it. Uh, Afghanistan and this Belarus both, but the Iran and Mongolia are still the observing member as per my institution and my remembrance. But I might be wrong, so let's go with it. and su has six dialogue partners known as uh, uh, azerbaijan armenia cambodia nepal and then turkey and democratic socialist republic of sri lanka all right sri lanka is also uh, you know dialogue members dialogue partners it has the four observational state members and six dialogue members all right 8 plus 6 plus 10 sorry Yeah, eight plus four, twelve plus six, eighteen. Now the SEO main goal as follows: strengthening the mutual trust and neighboring neighborness among the neighbor neighborliness among the member states, promoting their effective cooperation in politics, trade, the economy, research, technology, culture, as well as in education, the energy, transport, tourism. environment protection and other areas making joint efforts to maintain and ensure peace security stabilization stability in the region and moving towards the establishment of a democratic fair and rational new international politics and economic order all right so uh, remembrance beijing china is the headquarter it started in 2001 and uh, there total eight countries part of it Six are the observe, four are the observation uh, countries, and uh, six are the dialogue countries. All right. Now, uh, if I talk about the members, SCO members, we have the India, Pakistan, China, Russia, four countries, and rest four: Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. See, right? All four stan and all four nations. Now, if we talk about some defense organization, we have the NATO. uh it is again headquarters is in uh, belgium all right nato nato's headquarters is in belgium brussels and uh, uh, if i uh, now this european union is also in uh, belgium all right eu uh, eu uh, eu and as well as the nato both are in belgium uh, but uh, uh, 27 nations are there in eu and 30 nations are in nato that is or are three nations three more nations Uh, uh the nato uh founding members of alliance belarus canada now uh, canada is there one country we got it now canada is there 
UK is there. United Kingdom was not part of a European Union. All right. Canada, United uh, United Kingdom, and USA. These four countries were not part of European Union. All right. Means the European Union plus the three other countries. Now the NATO is thirty member each, and there were twelve founding members. Alliance. All right. Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, United Kingdom, and United States. All right. Uh, there. Uh, what are the objectives? The provision for enlargement in Article Ten North North Atlantic Treaty means whatever the countries which are coming under the uh, North Atlantic uh, nations. North Atlantic is kind of ocean. It is the ocean itself, of course, Atlantic Oceans. And uh, for the European states, the position of further principle, the treaty have to contribute to the security of North Asia area. Now, every uh, country which is part of NATO, it has to, uh, you know. Put its effort in uh, for the security for the northern Atlantic areas. <coughs> Now, any decision to invite a country to join the alliance is taken by the North uh, North Atlantic Council and NATO's principal political decision-making body on the basis of consensus among all the allies. All right, means it is a discussion basis. If any country want to join, then North Atlantic North Atlantic uh, Council. Will make a decision to add its the values. All right. Now NATO NATO purpose is to guarantee the freedom and security of its member through political and military means. All right. NATO uh, NATO is made to provide the freedom to its members for uh, in the perspective of uh, politics as well as the military. All right. Now the political uh, when it comes to political, the NATO promotes. Demo democratic values, all right, and enable the member to consult and cooperate on defense and security related to issues, to problem solving, building trust, and in long run, preventing conflicts. So politics is all about these all things, all right. So we are talking about the values now, democratic values. Politics is all about democratic values, building trust, you know, solving problems, and uh, resolving uh, issues, and preventing conflicts. And having a good uh, relation for the longer end perspective, and having good cooperation in defense as well. So these are the things which are related to politics. And if we talk about the military, then NATO is committed to peaceful resolution of disputes. All right. If dip uh, diplomatic effort fails, it has to it has the military power to understand undertake crisis management operation. All right. These are carried out. These are carried out under the Collective Defense Clause of NATO Founding Treaty, Article Five of Washington Treaty, or under a United Nations mandate, along in a cooperation with other countries and international organization. All right. So the two main function of the NATO it is providing, uh, which is related to politics as well as the military, preventing conflicts, building trust, having solving the issues. All right, and having good democratic values, and consultation and cooperation in defense, and security issues, and when it comes to military, uh, always using diplomatic means first. But if it doesn't uh, take place well, then going for the military, and together forming a coalition of nations against one such nation. All right, now we have the nuclear supplier group, the NSG. It was established in 1974. Headquarter is not known here. Headquarter must be known. All right, I might be uh, provide you later on. Headquarter is not known, and uh, there uh, the head is the on the rotational basis. 14 members are there. The nuclear supply group NSG is a group of nuclear supplier countries. NSG, NSG participating government that seek to contribute to non-proliferation of nuclear weapons through the implementation of two sets of guidelines for the. Nuclear export and nuclear related to exports. All right, the nuclear supply group NSG was created by the following exploration in 1974 of a nuclear device by a non-nuclear weapon states, which demonstrated that nuclear technology transfer for peace purpose could be misused. All right, now the European Commission on the chair of Zagana Committee participated as an observer. It's a waste. Waste again. 
uh, yeah this could be read it now the nsg known originally as the london club all right and uh, the n- nuclear supply group was earlier known as the london club the convened a series of meeting to facilitate a consistency improvements and uh, uh, you know uh, following 1974 on nuclear device by a non nuclear state all right all right now it's again waste all right now this could be read this could be read as a part of nsg outreach the uh, group maintain a public document entitled the nuclear supply group all right its origin role activities which is updated periodically for the publication of iaea as in fresh cricks 539 now we will talk about india and nsg india was established and uh, the nsg the nsg was established in 1975 and respond to india's nuclear test in 1970 all right the uh, that means india tested uh, f- uh, the fire in the 1974 its nuclear power in the uh, rajasthan all right and through nsg is administered new countries but it allows only those countries which are signatory of non proliferation treaty or comprehensive test ban treaty ctbt all right which are signatory or non proliferation treaty the though nsg is administering new countries but it is allowing only those countries which are signatory non proliferation countries all right and india has signified neither the npt nor the member of ctbt so india is neither the member of non proliferation treaty or nor it is the member of ctbt all right and comprehensive test ban treaty acha means uh, uh, the nsg the national the nuclear supply group is allowing only the non proliferation treaty organization as well as the comprehensive test ban treaty the ctbt organizations but india is neither of them all right since long time india is trying to get the nsg the nuclear supply group membership it was civil nuclear deal with us conducted in 2008 that paved the way for india's application as a member of nsg considering india commitments to separate its civil and military nuclear program and its non proliferation record in nuclear weapon india has got the support from various nsg members all right means india is willing Well, uh, it is trying to get the membership currently also, and uh, now it was civil nuclear deal with US. It was the civil nuclear deal with US concluded in two thousand eight. All right, that paved the way of India's application as a member of NSG. Considering India's commitment to separate its civil and military nuclear program at uh, all non proliferation record is. nuclear weapon india has got support from uh, various nsg members as well now what is the importance of nsg membership it has paved the way to access the technology for the range of use for medical to build the nuclear power plant for india all right use from medicine to build a uh, range of use of medicine to build nuclear power plant in india by accessing latest technology india can commercialize the the production of nuclear power equipment this in turn will boost the innovation and high tech manufacturing in india having the ability to offer its own nuclear power plant <laughs> to the world means spawning of an entire nuclear industry and related technology development this could give the make in india program a big boost all right as well as an energy the uh, membership will make indigenous nuclear industry companies compiling with international norms and make it easier for them to trade in international market all right we will we can uh, sell our indigenous nuclear uh, no missiles which are which are with the international norms uh, which will make it easier to sell in international market now uh, these this is pressing need to the scale up to nuclear power production to release india's commitment to reduce the dependency on fossil fuel uh, fossil fuels and to ensure 40% of its energy is sourced for renewable and clear sources and it will possibly only if india gains access to nsg all right and the pressing need to escape from nuclear power plant is to release india's commitment to reduce the 
the dependency on fossil fuel all right if we have the uh, nuclear power plant production if we use the nuclear power plant production then there will be a reduction in the fossil fuel use and ensuring 40% of its energy is sourced from the renewable as well as the clean sources and its 40% of the energy will be from the renewable as well as the clean sources and it will only happen if india gains its nsg now we will talk about the sark now uh, sark all right sark nation the south asian association for regional cooperation and there is asean asean is of 10 countries asean asean countries also had 10 countries all right as i told asean also had 10 countries it had uh, headquarter at the jakarta made in 1967 all right and uh, sark yeah sark was made later on uh, it was it is in 1985 headquarters in kathmandu nepal and uh, member is eight countries it had 10 countries uh, sorry uh, the asean has 10 countries it was made in 1967 headquarters is in jakarta indonesia uh, but in sark it was made in 1985 what is the, the difference between uh, sark and asean if somebody asks you can say that uh, asean it was uh, uh, established in 1967 headquarters in jakarta uh, headquarters in jakarta uh, indonesia and there are total 10 members and the full form of uh, asean is association of southeast asian nations all right but when it comes to sark sark full form is south asian association south asian association for region cooperation it was established in the year of 1985 that headquarters in kathmandu and comprises of member of eight countries all right now the uh, south asian association for regional cooperation sark was established with the signing with sark charter in dhaka all right on 8 december 1985 all right the sark uh, the sark comprises of eight members state afghanistan bangladesh bhutan india maldives nepal pakistan as well as the sri lanka all right the secretary of the association was set up in kathmandu in Uh, 1987 so it was for established in 1985 and with the eight members and still has the eight members that is india is there all right the, look uh, nearby the india is there and its uh, counterpart uh, which is uncomparable pakistan is there all right then do we have china no we we do not have china and if india pakistan is there then afghanistan is also there then these are the, okay india pakistan afghanistan and then we have our uh, uh, sri lanka is there all right nepal is there bhutan is there so these are the countries which are closer to india now bangladesh is also there whom india helped in 1971 war all right in its liberation all right then we have maldives so maldives is again there we have we have been helping maldives in all right uh, when we had uh, uh, saving its president so total eight members have been done already now uh, maldives is in indian ocean no uh, india and maldives india is there maldives is there pakistan afghanistan is there all right nepal is there <coughs> sri lanka is there then uh, bhutan is there Bangladesh is there. So these are the countries which are. <coughs> I'm sorry. Now Kathmandu is in Nepal. So Nepal is the headquarter of uh, this SAC. And what is the objective of SAC? Is to promote the welfare of the people of South Asia. That means providing welfare. That means harmony of the uh, South Asian people and to improve their quality of life. All right. We are also improving the quality of life to accelerate the economic growth. the social progress and the cultural development that means similar like uh, asean all right and provide all individual the opportunity to live in dignity and to realize their full potential to promote the strengths collective self reliance among the countries of south asia to promote mutual trust understanding appreciation of one another problems and to promote the active collaboration and mutual assistance in the economic social cultural technical uh, scientific field to strengthen the cooperation with other developing countries to strengthen the cooperation with themselves in the international forum as a matter of common interest 
and to cooperate with international as well as regional organization with similar aims and purposes and the decision at all levels are to be taken on the basis of an axiomity the and the uh, bilateral as well as the contingency issues of excluded from the deliberation of association all right so these are the things uh, the sark has been using that's mean development through uh, what development through cooperation all right region cooperation that means it will be giving the dignity to the people those who are living more opportunities has to be given no uh, economics has to be economy has to be developed for all as well as dealing with the uh, at the international forum they together if they have any problem they can stand to it all the nations in the un and other uh, what uh, what are the area of sarc cooperation that means the human resource development and tourism that means and whatever the nations eight nations we have so there can be good tourism as well as human resource development development will be there agriculture and rural development will be there environment natural disaster and biotechnology will be there economic trade and finance will be there social affairs will be there information and poverty alleviation will be there energy transport science and technology will be there education security and culture are the important organization all right now we have the fatf that is financial action task force which is made for the money laundering as well only made in 1989 headquarters in paris france all right finance and action task force it consists of 39 members the fatf is the international inter, intergovernmental body established in the midst of okay okay jurisdiction objective is to set standards and promote effective implementation of legal regulation and operating measures for combating money laundering terrorist uh, financing and other related to threats to the integrity of international financial system the fatf policy making body okay fatf is a policy making body which uh, looks for the money laundering terrorism activities all right and it is combating these all things and it is actually a policy making body a legal body uh, which is which works under intercommunal uh, intercommunal skills and uh, which uh, uh, generates necessary political wills and brings the national legislative as well as the regulation reforms in these areas all right and it promotes the country's progress in implementing the fatf recommendation on peer reviews and it studies the money laundering trend monitor legislative financial as well law enforcement activities taken in the nation and international level reports on the complication and issues recommendation and start to be combat money laundering <coughs> in addition to fatf 40 plus 9 recommendation and uh, 2002 fatf issues a list of non cooperating countries or the terrorism ncct commonly called as fatf blacklist now it set out principle for the action and allows countries a measure of the flexibility in implementation of these principle according to these particular circumstances and constituency framework both set of fatf recommendation are intend to be implemented and at the national level throughout the legislature and could legally bind the measures all right friends uh, i think we have done enough the lecture has been already belong uh, it is 2 o'clock in the night and uh, good night everyone i hope uh, this uh, uh, lecture was helpful uh, i will bringing uh, part 2 of it i will be discussing more on cord and other organizations all right which will give a better understanding the break exit and other stuffs all right uh, the part 2 will be a little smaller and but we have dealt with all of these things and it was long and now i want to go to sleep so thank you everyone jai hind and do your best do your best and keep winning why it is not closing i don't know yes